so this this past week has has continued to be incredibly stressful for anyone who has to rely tangentially online for platforms to make a living that dude is just burning it all down it is impossible to sum up everything from the last week that he just threw at us like he was telling people to print out their code yeah to bring it in to show him that's like i'm not a coder but i'm pretty confident that's not how you display code no it's not it did that's it's, it's not like it's, it's like what is he cypher from the fucking matrix like right i redhead i don't even see the code come on no you're not Knife off not the code on paper doesn't show you what the code does um he had like what was that called a code review and it was actually a a flow chart and t- they drew a little picture of an iphone now, I'm not an engineer, but I know that during a code review, nobody has to draw little pictures. He let Yi back on and immediately started posting anti-Semitic. Nine. Um, he let Trump back and on. Let, hmm? And then he let Sunkiss Stalin back on. Yeah, Trump is back on. But you know what? Trump hasn't posted anything. Well, no, because if he posts anything to Twitter, he has to admit that it's better than his little truth social. Also that, but someone else came up with a theory that that makes sense. And that is he wants Elon to beg. Because Let's face it. Twitter's on fire. And Elon needs Trump more than Trump needs Twitter. And that's sad. Famous people are leaving the Trent Reznor deactivated his account trent who is cooler than you will ever be trent yeah. Reznor could reach 100 years old be confined to a wheelchair pooping in a bag barely able to remember who he is and he will still be cooler than any of us ever trent Reznor could start wearing socks with sandals tomorrow and he'll still be cooler than all of us and then what happened musk starts Hey, Trent Reznor's a crybaby. And then Musk does this thing with, he does this emoji, which is the stupidest emoji. It's the little laughing, crying, tilted, rolling emoji. Oh. And, you know, someone said, whenever anyone posts that emoji, it means they're madder than they've ever been in their entire life. I I think what's going to happen is, as more and more celebrities and people of note leave Twitter, they're going to see how many of how many little laugh cry emojis they can get Elon to post in a single tweet. How mad can they make him? No matter you guys, you guys are just you guys are just losers. CBS left all of it. That's like like the least cool network on television. Yeah, and they're like, see. Ya. CBS. CBS is a network like only your grandparents watch. And it wasn't just one account. CBS News and local CBS stations and all of CBS said, but I haven't jumped ship yet. I did make a hive. That I've got a hive account. too. Nash 076. A hive's a little hard to use. Like it's only on phones for right now. There's a lot of bugs. It's a small app. But it looks yeah, like I don't mind the phone thing. It's just like it's hard to search for another user well, to find. That, like it's not I, super user friendly at the moment. I don't like the phone thing. I have a very nice keyboard that I like to type on. I I've got a mechanical keyboard. I have a very nice mouse. I have two 27 inch screens, and yet you expect me to do this. Sh- That's a thousand, couple thousand dollars worth of nine over there. Thank you. No, I'm sorry. We've got an, um, probably one of my Hall of Fame bug shots tonight. What? What? That's a bold claim. Do I? I come on. Do I disappoint? I'm just saying that's saying a lot. It is. All right. Let's get the intro rolling. Each week, Catherine, Radio Dead Air audience, go out the worldwide interwebs. Find all sorts of horrible stuff that bring back here a little segment we like to call Crazy. "What the fuck is wrong?" And uh, we're gonna we're gonna build up to it. 
It's still November. We're just a little past um, uh, the uh, the election. No, nope, but all right. I was trying to be slick there, but better transition. But no, it did not work. All right, let's see. So yeah, we're just past the election, and of course, there was much less election stupidity than we were all fearing, which is good. There was still some. And uh, yeah. we we have it from Georgia, specifically from, this is not the best uh, mugshot yet. We'll get there. This was kind of, this is not this is just a tribute. Um, <laughs> but uh, from the department of who the fuck do you think you are? This comes to us from Georgia. Georgia man arrested, accused of filming voting machines, slapping voter. On election day. Looking at this mugshot. I can already hear him lecturing me about Zack Snyder. Four score and seven beers ago. About how Zack Snyder is an auteur. <laughs> we need to restore the site. Like I can hear it. Georgia man is facing charges after he allegedly recorded video of a voting machine and then slapped an elec- a voter on election day. Suspect is, is subscribed as Jesse Hunt. Are you sure? Are you sure he's not Mike? Um, the the incident took the same thing. yeah the <laughs> incident took place November eighth. Uh, poll manager at the location said Hunt walked into the library, cast his ballot, then started recording video on his phone. Uh, it's illegal in the state of Georgia to take pictures or videos of polling locations. It's legal in most places. Polling yeah, manager. You know, yeah, you can't do that. Polling manager said Hunt had, was asked several times to stop after he was told repeatedly to stop. Sheriff's deputies had to remove him. That's when, according to warrants, he slapped another voter. Faces several charges, including interference with poll workers' primaries, election, and provoking simple battery. I, what the fuck were you going to do? You know, it, it's, it's, there's a, a meme that went back a little while that 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 bit from batman returns where the uh the penguin is given it the the mayoral speech and and batman has the recording of the penguin saying all this fucked up stuff about gotham and i'm gonna play this city like a hot from hell and and he plays it and the crowd immediately turns on him well there's a meme a max a max a a mix-up i'm not describing it very well you probably find it yourself where the penguin that that comes over and once the crowd hears the guy fucking being an awful they love him for it it's yeah. very much the, the trump world version um they're like yay and, and i think that's that he thought that how that was how this was going to work he thought he was a hero an intrepid journalist protecting our freedoms because that's what they all fucking think they thought if i record this i will show people the truth and what, what are you showing you're showing the fucking inside of a library Right, you're showing people walking into a little booth in a library. Like, oh what, no, what the fuck? Literally, how do you go through life without thinking? You know what? Should I do this thing in there? Are there potentially any laws about this? This, which is of course one of the biggest social rituals we have in the United States of America. I wonder if there are any rules. No, there probably are not. I am just going to no, do the I thing. Him. Oh, right, right. He's special. He's special. I mean, it, 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 he can't help it. Tara, his his mustache was shot off in the war. <laughs> have a have a heart. January six chick who was like, they don't send attractive women to prison, girl. That's right. Yeah, they do. Uh, so we have more <laughs> okay this is florida and <laughs> well it you tried <laughs> florida suspect yells i'm sorry to deputies as he sprints across freeway traffic <laughs> Florida suspect who ran from police after being stopped for allegedly driving 110 miles per hour with a suspended license apparently was courteous enough, courteous enough to yell, I'm sorry, as he darted in between vehicles across the freeway. 
suspect Zachary Seibert was uh, decided to play Frogger across I-95. Okay, I'm going to pause there. I don't know if you've ever been to the East Coast. Um, I-95 is a gigantic interstate that runs from Maine to the tip of Florida's dick. And it does. It runs right to the... America's urethra, if you will. It's Yeah, it's, it's America's urethra. That's it. Or maybe it's that... So I, guess, I guess that would mean like I-75 is that weird little little vein on the side. Of the, anyway, mm -hmm. um, this is one of the biggest American highways. Yes. Yeah. And once you get to Florida, the, tur the idea of a speed limit becomes a little flexible. You don't do this. Th this is... What... It's not. I, I I love these people who think they run to certain areas. They get they they're they're free and clear. I I also am bemused by the yelling. I'm sorry. Like, what did <laughs> did you think they were going to be like? Oh, he said he's sorry, guys. Well, you it's you, all right. you have to admit the cops were probably like, wait, did he, he just did he just say I'm sorry? One of them, at least, uh, you know, one of them was biting back. It's all right. One of them was just tr fighting that back right there. I mean, this mugshot is also pretty great because that man looks incredibly stoned. Uh, 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 uh. I said, I'm sorry, man. Why are you being such a bummer? It's got these weirdly like, like, like dollar store. Matthew McConaughey vibes going on. Yeah. He's got the he's got the cheekbones. Yeah. Nothing going on in here though. Yeah. Okay, it first of all, run, okay. Once the cops have your information, running doesn't help. No. They have your license, and even if it's a suspended license, they have your license, they have your registration. Where are you going to run? Where are you going to go? Honestly, if you're stupid enough to try it, you're probably going to go home. Yeah. Or you're going to run across four lanes of Mach 7 traffic. Yeah. There are motherfuckers on I-95 who just casually drive fast enough to go back in time. Yeah. And you're going to run across that shit. Hell no. But, but also, I, like, what's your plan if you get across? Because most highways on one side or the other, on the sides, there's a whole lot of nothing. <sighs> oh, for fuck's sake. Oh, uh, well, we got a feel-good story this week. I love these. Uh, this is from West Virginia. Um, Jesus Christ. <laughs> the picture is incredible. Ooh, massive sinkhole threatens to swallow West Virginia Police Department. And when they say massive sinkhole, they're not kidding. Look at that shit. A huge sinkhole has opened up right next to a West Virginia Police Department disrupting traffic and requiring several schools to move their classes online. The sinkhole, located in uh, on West Virginia Route 20, right next to the police department, is a long-standing problem in Hinton, West Virginia. When the sinkhole first opened up in June, it was just six feet wide and about 30 feet deep. Officials said the original collapse was due to a uh, failing 90-year-old drain beneath the road. Okay, when it first opened up, 60 feet wide and 30 feet deep. Not six great. Feet. So, yeah, oh, six feet wide, 30 feet deep. Not great. Manageable. But do you know, and they don't have the pictures of it here, but do you know what they did when it was just a big pothole at that point? They just put some cones around it and some police tape, and they just sort of ignored it. They didn't try to fill it? Yeah, it, 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 they, they just kept getting bigger. Uh, rains from Hurricane Nicole. Never heard of a good place. Uh, yeah, yeah. Um, 
on Saturday. I mean, that thing, I'm waiting for Hellboy to crawl out of that motherfucker. Look right? at that thing. That is massive. It's it, like the, the whole buildings, of, like half the buildings about to go down there. Um, yeah. Eventually, the department will have to install a permanent 30 foot steel drainage structure under the road. Construction contract for the structure will open bid soon, and the project will likely cost the state about five million total. Or you just let it have its way. Yeah. Just just go on, reroute everything, and just let the sinkhole win. I mean, do we need West Virginia? <laughs> <laughs> well, we already we, have Virginia. Well, the cu- then country roads wouldn't work. The, the lyrics would be all mus- messed up. We kind of do. Country <laughs> roads take me whole. <laughs> I I was just you know they what's what's killing me here is they just sort of like they they put up the 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 uh, the, the cones and were like done. Okay. I've got to find so you that don't picture. Think, you don't think that's going to be a continuing problem? Being that's just going to take care of it? Uh, all right. I got, I've got. i got to find that picture. Because they had... Yeah, here it is. I found it. I, found, I You can see it. Here we go. Put it on the screen over here. You need Buffy Summers controlling that Buffy, like patrolling that thing that is Jesus. a hell mouth yes um, yeah there there you go i, I put that i sent you the picture <laughs> that's that that oh. was their solution that was their solution <laughs> problem solved we're done boys let's go home uh, I can just see. I know I'm doing a lot of like NBC sitcom references right now, but can you see like Leslie Nope <laughs> in somebody's office trying to convince them that this is a problem? Yeah, and Jim is like, "We put some cones up. Mm-hmm. It's a problem." Yeah, solved it. Uh, all right. Well, we had the feel good. Now we have oh, this motherfucker. I, it's Florida, and oh my God, this motherfucker. That's all I can think of to say in regards to this person. I think you will agree with me, you at home. Um, Florida man shoots two buses full of Niceville daycare students with gel pellets. What are gel pellets? I guess they're they're like they're, they're not. I think they're like paintball ish. Is that like Tide Pods in bullet form? Uh, Okaloosa County, Florida. A Florida man was arrested in Okaloosa County for shooting two school buses full of daycare children with gel pellets. 23-year-old John Henderson of Ponce de Leon is charged with shooting a missile into a dwelling, vehicle, building, or aircraft. That, that was very oddly specific. Yeah. Yeah. Um... According to the arrest report, Henderson was a passenger of a beige 2005 Toyota Highlander uh, when he shot two school buses full of daycare children with gel pellets back in June. Deputies in a report say the gel pellets could produce death or great bodily harm based on the speeds the pellets could travel, which is around 200 feet per second. And how small children are. Yeah. Gel-based airsoft rounds, yeah. Um, deputies in a report eventually made contact with Henderson as well as the driver of the Highlander. They successfully tracked the vehicle down through photos of the Florida Department of Transportation. Henderson told deputies in a report that he was, quote, just playing with the little kid. Just playing with the little kids. That By shooting at them. I mean, I know it wasn't like bullets, but... I've seen what a paintball does to a grown ass person. Mm-hmm. Children, I don't know if you I don't know if you guys know this. Children are much smaller. They are. It's it's weird, but they are. They're very small. Yeah. And they they have a lot less mass. More to than that. Can you imagine like that. can you imagine the bus driver looking back in their rearview mirror and there's a motherfucker with a gun 
pointed at your fucking bus? In fucking America? In America, right? You assume everybody's dead. Yeah. But the, the God. You have a hit in the eye that could lose them. Yeah, I mean, the, the kids don't know. They're daycare. These are what daycare is right. like five and under. Know, but you're shooting whatever you're shooting. But also, that could kill a small child. Yeah. I, I don't know. Wouldn't the, and, and just the mugshot alone. Like, I didn't know. Yeah, you, you. Who raised you? With your stupid bowl haircut. Really, right? I don't normally get into, you know, looks. I don't like to judge people on their looks. But haircuts, haircuts are a choice. Haircuts are a decision you make. You you walk in you walk in you sit down in that chair and you decide I'm going to do things that's going to say things about me. He was like, I would like to look like the Beatles, all fucked, Shaggy from Scooby Doo at the same time. Go. Shot a time. Yeah, motherfuck this look fuck this guy. How what what is what what snaps in your brain that makes you think this would be good? Well what we've we've like we've talked about this with men trying to impress women by scaring the shit out of them. There is there is a subset of men that think that violent intimidation is funny. But if it had been like, okay. Let's maybe you got like a super soaker, not a great plan, but harmless. A Nerf gun, not great, but still mostly harm. You're using an airsoft fucking pistol. You dumb son of a bitch. But we we have we've got more and I believe it or not, this is not the last story. The last one's even better. And this is not the world class mugshot, although Damn, something happened here. Um, woman fires 357 Magnum inside local hotel, threatens to shoot people. And uh, let, let's get that, that mugshot going there, because wow. wowzers, what the hell happened? Thing, things happened here. Yeah. Well, 40-year-old Montana woman faces several felony charges after police say she discharged a revolver into the front desk of a Chubbuck hotel and threatened to shoot at least three people. We're going to get into why, and it's not a good reason. Rebecca Lynn O'Connell. I mean, reason would be a good reason? <laughs> Unless everyone in the hotel is zombies. I mean, if maybe if you're a Winchester, maybe. Um, Rebecca, then everyone in the hotel might be zombies. Yeah. Rebecca Lynn O'Connell of Melrose, Montana, has been charged with three counts of aggravated assault and one count of discharging a firearm and an occupied building, all felonies. Um, she also faces one misdemeanor charge of malicious injury to property. The incident began to unfold shortly after midnight on November 4th when Chubbuck police were dispatched to the lobby. Uh, O'Connell called police to report she had shot herself in the hand, adding that she was still armed with the firearm and would shoot anyone who came near her. All right, pause right there. You called the police to tell them you've shot yourself in the hand. But don't come near me or I'll shoot you too. What 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 do you want them to do? Um worry? I would I would say. I mean, um, you call them and tell them there someone's been shot. They're they're going to show up and check into that. Officers arrived on scene and observed the front desk employee standing with his hands up and O'Connell armed with a silver handgun while pacing back and forth inside the lobby hotel. Shortly after, offers, uh, officers arrived and stationed themselves outside, outside the hotel armed with rifles carrying ballistic shields. O'Connell exited the front lobby of the hotel, then ordered by police to drop the revolver and lie face down on the ground. She did. Uh, she was subsequently detained and handcuffed. Officers began to place O'Connell in patrol when her boyfriend identified as Chalice Bloxham. I'm not kidding you. What is that name? Chalice Bloxham. B O L. Simpsons character. B L O X X A H A M. There's an X in there. Because he's extra. 
Chalice blocks them, approach them while yelling, which is already not a good thing to do. When they're they're all hopped up, because there's been a gun out, they've got the shields and the rifles, and you're going, what the fuck? Are you fucking fuck? No, that's not, that's... Yeah, that's kind of begging to get shot, unfortunately. They detain blocks, but... American what? cops aren't known for being, like, reasonable de-escalators. Yeah. Uh, locating in his coat pocket a speed loader and bullets for a 38 special revolver. Officers interviewed O'Connell, said she had used methamphetamine about 12 hours before. 12 hours. And that still. Good shit. <laughs> well, depends on your definition of good. Yeah. Uh, O'Connell told Bloxham she was attempt, uh, told police Bloxham was attempting to kill her. And the front desk employees of the hotel provided them with towels that contained chloroform. O'Connell said Bloxham was going to kill her by putting the chloroform lace towel over her mouth. Police found absolutely no evidence to support any of O'Connell's claims. Meth is not a good drug. Frankie says there's a meth head to her madness. Yeah, that. Why in the. It's kind of like smoking these days, right? Because if you're like a kid coming up and you're like, no one smokes anymore in America. It's kind of like one of those things that's like, stop being cool for a while. I mean, kids will do the fucking vapes. The only one that doesn't smoke. What? It's still big in the beauty industry. I work in a hair salon and I'm the only one that doesn't smoke. Well, yeah, I'm talking like kids right now growing up, teenagers. Yeah. I mean, because it's, it's, don't, so, and you part remember of, when like every sitcom had to do a very special episode about one of the kids being offered cigarettes? <laughs> and like, there was always some kid at school who was weirdly invested in making the lead kid smoke a cigarette. Right? <laughs> but, you were led to believe that this would be like a turning point in your life. But it, now we've hit a point where it's like, why would I do that? They still still have a problem with the yeah. vaping, but the vaping, the cig- as far as cigarettes go, they're done. The reputation cigarettes got pretty much killed them. So why are people still doing meth? You would think meth would have a worse one because is it really I that feel good? Because it's less expensive than cocaine. Is it really that good though? How could it be worth this? It doesn't seem like it would be to me. How how could it be worth this? This seems like bad. This seems very bad. But no, here was the mugshot I was talking about. This is magic. This is, this is, oh, you're prepping yourself there. And and, and the mugshot alone is not, mugshot's just part of the story. I don't know what happened here, but something has happened here. There we go. Man, wow. I told you so. That's a face. That's a Simpsons character. He's so yellow. That's jaundice. That's some serious fucking jaundice going on there. No, because the whites of his eyes aren't yellow. That's true. They aren't. And they would be. You're right. So that seems like self tanner gone horribly awry. It's just, it's, yeah, you're right. His eyes would be fucked up if it was jaundice. So it's not. Yeah. This is. And his lips are like weirdly pink. Very. This is a Simpsons kid. This is a Simpsons character. It's like fucking Bart all grown up. And what are the fucking neck tats? I don't understand. He's got like a little, like a little thing going down there too. There's a number 12. The rest of it, I can't make out. It's like being at the fucking eye doctor. Suck. I think it says suck 12. Something maybe like fuck. But maybe fuck 12. Man robbed bank using back of his birth certificate as note to teller while wearing ankle monitor from another case, all to <laughs> quote, prove a point to his lover. That you're dumb. 
Missouri man has pled guilty to robbing a local Bank of America branch using a demand note written on the back of his own birth certificate while he was wearing an ankle monitor related to a previous case. The device e- has no other piece of paper in your house. The device easily placed him at the scene. He did it all he admitted to authorities to, quote, prove a point. Though it's unclear from court records precisely what point he was trying to make. Michael Conley Lloyd, 30, entered his plea to one count of bank robbery in federal court on Friday. Um, approximately 11.30 a.m., an unknown white male uh, wearing a gray cut-off t-shirt and blue gym shorts and an orange shoe on his right foot, un-orange shoe, entered the Bank of America. The suspect had multiple tattoos and brandish on his both left and right arms. He approached the teller counter, presented a note to the teller written on a white piece of printer-like paper, uh, which was written on a pink marker or highlighter, stated, give me your money now, don't say anything, I have a partner outside. The teller received the note. Uh, will be for, yeah. the teller uh, took the note from the suspect, grabbed the money from one of the teller drawers, handed the money and the demand note over to the uh, suspect who took the money and the demand note, turned from the teller counter and exited the west uh, entrance of the Bank of America. Investigators returned. They then unidentified perpetrator had used a black Dodge Ram to get away. Um, at a phone call at 1140 a.m., 10 minutes after the heist, a uh, call came from the boyfriend of Lloyd's roommate. Lloyd was quickly uh, located at the Lacey Acres of Oklahoma Home Park, where he lived. Where do you say Lloyd swiftly confessed after waiving his Miranda rights? During the interview of Lloyd, Lloyd admitted to robbing the Bank of America. He told investigators he robbed the bank because he and his lover had got into a fight and he wanted to, quote, prove a point. Prior to robbing the Bank of America, Lloyd wasn't sure which bank he was going to rob. They drove to the Bank of America, decided to pull in the parking lot. Uh, the demand note was written on the back of Lloyd's birth certificate. Lloyd recalled writing it, uh, robbed the Bank of America itself. Lloyd said he threw the birth certificate and ID out the window as he fled. He said he began passing police cars. He then became scared and started throwing the money out the window of the truck. Then called his lover, Ashley, to tell her what he had done. He knew very quickly, however, the chick was up. Lloyd told the best she expected to receive prison time and would take full responsibility for the punishment he received. $754. Seven plea agreement indicates the investigators learned Lloyd was wearing an ankle mar- monitor connected to a previous incident. They don't say which, which he was, uh, what he was in there for. Not even, this is not a joke. Are we sure this is a mentally competent person? I think, yeah, it is. And I, I'll tell you why. Because number one, they don't mention anything like that in here about that yeah. situation. Uh, they would have. They definitely would have if he was under like psychiatric evaluation. The other thing is, this is such a this is this is. I have in my younger years, when I was very stupid, gotten so mad in an inconsequential argument with my significant other that I forgot what we were even arguing about, but I wanted to be right. So you. Robbed a bank with your birth certificate? I did not. <laughs> but Dang, you, that's, you gotta be pretty mad. You could get up ahead of fucking steam about some stupid damn thing, and you're like, no, no, no. I'm gonna prove it. I don't know what happens then. I guess you admit I was right, and you put me up on your shoulders, and someone dumps Gatorade on me. But I'm going to prove it. I mean, I have a pretty bad temper. <laughs> but I don't think I've ever, ever been this mad. Four, 750 bucks. And he's already wearing did the ankle you, monitor. Did you used to create a little trail to helpfully lead them to your home. You were already busted for an ankle monitor. Missouri State you Court did. Records uh, suggest a defendant with the same middle, first, middle, and last name, presumably the same person, was charged with drug offenses, driving without a license, resisting or interfering arrest, and, quote, a stealing offense. 
Uh, that's just part of the lengthy state level rap sheet bearing the same name as the federal bank robbery defendant. I guess he figured, well, I'm already fucked. What's what's this going to hurt? Maybe the point he was trying to prove was that he could, in fact, fuck up a crime so badly that it was, in fact, possible to rob a bank while doing everything wrong. wrong. Yeah. Lady Meanshell says, Oompa Loompa Herpa Dee Derp. Yeah, like, kind of. <laughs> like, except for the whites of his eyes and the, like, he got, he's got that Donald Trump tan because he's got the it weirdly does. pink lips. Yeah. That kind of end up looking like an anus because of it. How old is this guy? 30. Which is definitely old enough to know better. Yeah. Fuck me. Wow. Do you just remember? Imagine being the cop. There's like, did he just do our entire job for us? Why did we he even come really into? Really did everything wrong. Like, do, do look. I'm not. He can handcuff himself. I'm taking a break. I'm done. Yeah. He he's he's done it all. Do we even need to be here? Like, did you think throwing away the birth certificate? was going to help with the note still on the back of it? Like, I were don't, you going to say that's not mine? And I'm, I'm, I'm still here. I want, yep, yeah, so they're concerned about his liver function. No, this, look, this doesn't look like John. It could be. It doesn't look like John is, but something Wait. happened here. Yeah, something ain't right. That's for Something's damn sure. wrong. What the fuck? Honestly, it's all way too even to actually be self-tanner, I think. I don't know. It's, it's impossible. Just, all we know is something ain't right. Something's very wrong. I don't even know what I we think, learned there. I think he did you a favor. Yeah, I think, yeah, I just, yeah. Ashley, I think you need to just walk away and take this as a life lesson. So... Uh, what did we learn here? I don't know. Some, we learned how to fuck up a crime. It's okay to lose an argument. There you go. Just yeah. sometimes take the L. It's better. It's the better option. I know on the internet, that's like literally the worst thing you can do. It but is. sometimes it's okay to just be. We have learned that. Uh. Meth is not good. I don't I don't know how you could possibly think that there's there's an upside to it because there is no it's all downside. Right, Brady. Exactly. It's a bad drug. Um We've learned don't point anything gun related at children. Even if they're your own, don't do it. Just just that's that's a no no. How is that? How did you? How did you get out of your mama's house without ever learning that shit? We've learned that sometimes just ignore it and it'll go away is not how shit works. No. I mean, Lord knows here in America we've tried it. We have. We've tried it for every problem we have got. And we're all out of ideas. And it hasn't worked. Yeah. We've learned that pre-apologizing to the police um, is not going to get you out of the problem. I mean, I guess it's polite. Yeah, I'm sure they appreciated it. But at it the same... It doesn't really matter. Yeah. And finally, we learned... Um, yeah, just... You can't fuck around with the elections that kind of you, you don't, you are not solely vested with the authority. I do, however, love that these people are like, they're fucking with the elections and you know how I'm going to solve that problem? Fucking with the elections, honey. But how do you get like, think anyone would think, oh, this is a normal and good response to yeah. Even if the even if the problem were in fact real, which it's not, but if it were real, 
how could you imagine thinking, oh yeah, I'm going to go in and fuck with people while they're voting. That's a thing I can do and everyone will cheer for me. You get these weird little bubbles and you start feeding into you. You think this is okay and this is going to be fine. You actually get into it. It's like you find out. No, no. No. Everyone else thinks this is fucking weird. Like everyone. Everyone. 